Okay, now, obviously, this is awful UI, just absolutely horrendous UI. You would never have a Twitter client like this. We want our UI in these cells to look much nicer, much more customized to a tweet. So we're gonna go back to our storyboard here, and instead of using this awful subtitle style cell, we're gonna build a custom cell. And this custom cell is gonna have more good looking uh, and more of the data that comes with a tweet. So let's just build it. Let's go here, make this a little bigger, make some room. All right, I'm gonna grab some labels out of here. Here's a label. This will maybe be, let's say this is the tweeter. This is the person who, who's doing the tweet. By the way, this is a case where we're showing user content, really. These tweets are content. They're not like the title of a button or something. It's actually the content that the user has requested to see. So I'm gonna use a font here. You see this font? I'm not gonna use the system font. I'm gonna go down and start using these text styles. So the tweeter is gonna kind of be at the top. I'm gonna to have that be a headline font. So this is going to be the headline font. This could change over time, okay? Just whatever the system thinks headline font is. And it'll be true in every app. A headline will always you be using this font in every app. And users can even go into settings and change the size of their fonts. If they're like me and their vision's going, they can set them bigger, okay? And the fonts will get bigger automatically. So there's a big advantage to using these uh, fonts, these font styles. So there's that one. Um, there is the text of the tweet itself, so we'll just call that text. Uh, for this one, maybe a good font is body font, because this is really, this is the heart of what we're doing here, this body thing. One thing that's kind of cool with UI label, you know, the text in the tweet is probably gonna be multiple lines and it's gonna wrap. When you have a UI label like that, you wanna set this property lines to be zero. Okay, if you have zero predefined lines, then the UI label will be, well, will be however many lines it needs to to fit the information with wrapping, okay? Whereas this one is line one. This is always gonna be one line. And if it's too long, it just gets dot, dot, dot at the end. All right. Uh, what else do I wanna do here? Let's do, uh, let's do another label here for when the tweet was tweeted out, when it was created. That one's probably something like a caption, we'll say, small little text at the bottom. We'll uh, go ahead and center that right there. Uh, let's also get an image. Let's go down and find an image view down here. Where's our image view? Here it is. Drag it out here. This is gonna be uh, the profile image of the tweeter. So whoever tweeted this will have their little image here. Um, this one, by the way, I don't know how big profile images are on Twitter, and I don't care because I'm gonna make this thing always be a fixed size. So how do we make an image like this be a fixed size? Uh, using auto layout. And it turns out what you do is you control drag to itself. And when you do, you'll see that you have the option to fix its width, and you can control drag, and fix its height. You could also do both at the same time. And so what width and height has it fixed it to? Well, we can look over here in the size inspector and see that it's fixed it to 71 by 67. That doesn't sound very computer science-y. I'm gonna fix it to 64 by 64. So I've made it so this image view is always gonna be 64 by 64. I don't care how big the person's actual profile image is. I always want it to be that way. Okay, so there's another little auto layout tidbit for you. All right, so speaking of auto layout, I need to lay this stuff out. I kind of want it to look, yeah, something like this. See what I mean? Approximately. And so I'm just gonna use stack views. So we'll stack those two things together like that. Look at our things here, fill and fill. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, let's go over here, let's stack those together. Uh, that's fill and fill. One thing about these two, by the way, uh, they're gonna be sharing the space in this, ta in this stack view equally, okay? Um, but I don't want them sharing equally. I actually want the text to get more of the space. So I'm gonna click on the tweeter and I'm gonna go over to the size inspector and I'm gonna do something cool, which is set its content hugging priority. I'm gonna set its vertical content hunting priority to be higher than the other one. So they're both 251, you see? That one's 251, that one's 251. So I'm gonna set this one to be 300, just anything higher than 251. And that means that when the space is being allocated between this tweeter and the text, it's gonna hug the tweeter's content and the text is gonna get all the rest, okay? So that's a way that you can kind of, when you're sharing space between two things. All right, so now let's put these two in a stack. Maybe we'll uh, put some spacing here, something like that. 
Um, alignment here, top is good. I want them both at the top. I think that's good, I'm lined up uh, at the top. Uh, so I like that and fill is fine. Uh, I've got this, now I'm gonna do the same thing we did before, which is I'm gonna put this in the corner and I'm gonna control drag to the top. I'm gonna control drag to the leading edge. I'm gonna control drag to the trailing edge and I'm gonna control drag to the bottom edge, okay? So I want that out there and again, the same thing. I'm gonna take this and change it to standard if I can. I can't, so we'll go zero. And same thing here. Standard if I can, I can't, we'll do zero. Okay, so I've made this stack view that contains all this stuff fit in there. So I've basically done the auto layout necessary to make this thing use the space properly. Okay, and I can still change the size of this cell, right? I can click on it and I could make it a little bit smaller and all that stuff is just going to you know, stick to the edges, so it'll all be fine. Now, this is great. In fact, if we go back to our table view controller, and if I comment out this cell configuration, because we don't have a subtitle, so these don't make any sense anymore, uh, and we run, then we're gonna see that our UI, hopefully, if we didn't forget anything, it's going to look, in some ways, a little better. Yeah, so it kinda looks better. Now, the only thing that's not better is we lost our data because I commented out the data loading right here. So this is what we want the UI to look like basically with an image here and that there, but we need to set all this data. So how do we do that? Well, since this is a custom cell over here, we need to do it with a custom subclass of this UI table view cell right here. So I'm gonna create one of those, new file. Sorry, let me stop. Let's go here and new file. Okay, again, it's a Cocoa Touch class. This time though, it's not a table view controller, it's a table view cell. Okay, and I'm gonna call it a tweet table view cell because it shows a tweet. Put it in the same place as all the rest of my stuff there. Here's my table view cell. It gives me awake from nib, which is kind of nice, don't need it. Uh, and set selected, I don't do anything special when my table view cell is selected, but I could. I could draw in a blue background or something like that if I wanted, but I don't. Um, so I have this table view cell subclass. I'm gonna go back to my storyboard and make sure that I set the identity, don't forget this step, set the identity to be a tweet table view cell. If you forget this step, you won't be able to do any outlets or anything like that, okay? Now I wanna wire outlets up to this new class I just created, so I need to get them both on screen. I'll show you kind of a cool way to do that. Let's get the assistant editor up here. Remember I could do manual, blah, blah, blah. But another way is to hold down the option key and just click on the thing that you want to be on the right. I think I showed this before. But option clicking in the navigator will put that thing on the right. All right, so let's move this over more. Some space there. All right, so I need to wire up outlets to these four things, right? The tweeter, the text, and the image. So let's just do that. We'll go here, control drag, crane out. I'll call this my tweet, uh, what did I call this? My tweet profile image view. Profile image view, because it's gonna be a UI image view that shows the tweeter's profile. Uh, let's do the little create down here. Control drag from that. We'll call that tweet uh, created label. It's a label that shows when it was created. Let's do our little tweeter right here. And we'll call that our tweet user label. It's gonna show the label of the tweet user. And then we have the text right here. It's gonna show the actual tweet text, tweet text label. Okay, so I got these nice uh, little outlets right here. Now, of course, I need to be able to set these outlets with something. And here's where I need public API in my table view cell that gives me the data I need to do that. And I'm just gonna have my public API here be tweet. Give me the twitter.tweet that you want and I'll load these babies up. Okay, that's what it's saying here. Of course, we need to import Twitter because we're using it in this class. Okay, and when you set this tweet, I'm just going to, on did set, update my UI, just like I was a controller, but I'm not, I'm not a controller, I'm a view actually. This is the only time a view can have uh, these outlets, okay? So I need some private funk to do that. Update UI. Okay, now, you know, time is running a little bit short here, so I'm just going to type this in real quick. Uh, I believe I have tweets, so, oh, there it is, okay? 
so this is update. You can look at this later, but I'm just basically setting all the outlets here. See how I'm just setting these outlets, like setting the tweet level text to be the tweet's text, setting the user label to be the user description. Um, notice, by the way, I'm blocking the main thread here. Ugh. Okay, if this was my homework, bam, I just got dinged. So make sure you fix this, okay? If you're gonna use my code in any way in your homework, uh, which you probably want to, then you're gonna wanna fix this, okay? Don't do this on the main thread, don't block the main thread. But does anyone understand what Update UI is doing here? It's just taking this tweet that I was giving and loading this up. And this is happening over and over for every row in the table that gets displayed. This is happening. The copy of this class is being made and this is happening. Now, how do we set this? Okay, we set this back over here in our tweet table view controller in the same place that we configured the cell here for the uh, subtitle one. And in fact, I still need the tweet, but I don't need that. I'll leave those there so you can remember that code when you look at it later. But instead of setting those things, I just want to set that tweet. I want to set this var right here. But for me to set the var right here, I need to get my table view to be one of these. So I need to use an as. So I'm going to say, if I can let the tweet cell equal the cell, this reusable cell that I got, as a tweet table view cell, then I can say, cell, set your tweet to be my tweet that goes at this row, section and row. Okay? Now, we set the, uh, uh, what, oh, sorry, tweet cell, dot tweet. We set the class of, these, of this prototype right here, the prototype for this cell, we set it with the identity inspector to be a tweet table view cell. So when we come in here, it will, in fact, this as will work. Okay, it will be a tweet table view cell because we said that in the storyboard. So it created that kind of uh, thing. All right, so let's see if this works. Okay, it is working. Look, we've got the time the person tweeted it. It's got the person who tweeted it. It's got the text of the tweeting, but we got no image. Why didn't we get uh, people's images here? Okay, why do you think we didn't get these, these images? Well, let's go look at our console. What does it say? Oh no, app transport security. You recognize that from last time? It's because these profiles are HTTP slash something, not HTTPS slash something. So we know how to fix that. We'll just go back to our P info P list right here and add a row for app transport security. We'll open that up. We'll add arbitrary loads here. We'll make that be, yes, we allow arbitrary roads, loads. Okay, there's another problem here though. Look at all these tweets. Look how they're cut off. You see, every row is the same size and it's not big enough for most of the tweets. It's just dot, 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 dot. Wouldn't it be cool if these rows could be different sizes depending on how big the tweet is? Well, of course we can do that. Let's do it. Let's go see how this size is being set right now. Right now it's being set if we go and inspect this cell in its size inspector. Look, the row height is 96. So every single row is 96. What we want to do is in our view did load right here, we want to say that our table view's row height is not 96, it's UI table view automatic dimension. But as I said before, we also want to give it a little help by setting its estimated row height to something. And I'll tell you what, let's set it to what's in the storyboard, table view dot row height. Okay, so I'm getting the row height out of the storyboard, using it as the estimate, and then I'm resetting the row height to be the automatic dimension. And sure enough, see, look, this tall tweet is getting extra space and some of the smaller tweets, I don't know if we have any, here we can probably see it if we go like this. The smaller tweets get less space. Okay, so that's good. Um, we're out of time, so if you have to go, feel free. Uh